just have to be able to get through the next moment. It does change, you know, just get through it moment by moment and you'll be okay. And it will one day you'll look back and it's, and it's all the things that people tell you. You wish that you had that, yeah, at 22. But, you know, I wish I had fallen in love with myself earlier in life because I think I would have made some different decisions around some things that caused me pain if I had just loved myself a little bit more. The Podcast Empire, podcast mastery for women in business. Empire, today we have an unstoppable guest joining us, an author who has unlocked the secrets to leaving an incredible legacy through overcoming adversity. Get ready to embark on a transformative journey as we delve into the wisdom and resilience of our unstoppable guest. She is one of the authors in the Powerhouse series number four, the best-selling series produced by Elsa Morgan. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be inspired as we explore the power of perseverance and the legacy we can all create. Our upcoming guest, Anthea Horvath, is a veteran business strategist, coach, and mentor based in Australia, and she has over 25 years experience and what I know about Anthea is people come to her to be coached on their business and create highly profitable scalable businesses welcome powerhouse unstoppable Anthea (laughs) thanks Tracy it's lovely to be here It is great. We love showcasing women in business that are making power Mm. moves, creating movements, changing people's and families' financial blueprints and all of the good stuff. What inspired you to write this Unstoppable Four chapter? Well, Elsa, who produced the book, as you know, is very unstoppable herself. So Elsa... um, was talking to me I had a I had a very big year this year I broke both my ankles at the same time and I live in a I live on my own in a two-story house with two dogs so you can imagine breaking both your ankles at the same time and during that time I continued to work <laughs> so I was a reflection with Elsa on it she was asking how my ankles were and things and and she said I really want you to come into the book she said because you've had so much um, trauma and stuff in my life. And I don't think I have had necessarily more than anyone else. I think life is a journey of of, of ups and downs. Um, But I certainly uh, uh, have had a fair share of, should we say, things happen in my life that I've had to overcome. So I think sometimes it takes someone else saying to you, you're really inspirational. I don't think a lot of us see ourselves as really inspirational. Um, but she was she was saying, yeah, come in, come in, you know, and I do believe that stories are really, really important to share because we've all been there where we've been, you know, in a dark place or having a difficult time. And then we read something or even see something or listen to something. And it just gives us a little bit of perspective. So I feel like it was a good thing to do if I can share something that helps even just one person to get through a difficult moment then it's a good thing, right? It's definitely a good thing. And Mm. I was thinking then when you were talking as well, Anthea, you know, our stories, sometimes we don't think they're incredible or Mm. we've overcome as much as the next person, but that's what I love about our stories because it just unlocks your, your prison or your potential. And, and, and like you noted, it can actually help someone one, even if it's just one person. That is a reward within itself, right? Now, as a business strategist, after going through many adversities, wow, breaking two ankles at the same time, I couldn't even imagine. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) Say goodbye to your dignity for 12 weeks. (laughs) What 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 recommended? Oh, absolutely. That is a challenge within itself. Now, with your achievements, and you have many, in your life, does one stand out? Is is there one that you're kind of like, shoulders back, head in the air, I'm so proud of that? Um, 
I was sort of thinking about this before today and you know there's lots of things I've done like I moved to Australia with $1,500 and I didn't know anyone you know I was only 22 years old didn't have a house didn't know anyone all those sorts of things but and, and I'm not a mother I didn't have children I wasn't blessed with children in this lifetime and so I know a lot of women will say what's you know what, what's your biggest achievement they'll say it's, it's my it's my kids children but I think for me it's actually my business and that might sound a little bit sad but I feel like the clients that I've had and I've been in my business for oh, 25 plus years I've literally coached thousands of business owners thousands and thousands of business owners and that's not um that's not for me to say out of like ego in terms of look at me I've done all this stuff but what I'm really proud of is the smallest of things that happen it's the person who writes to me on their overseas holiday with their family and says, thank you so much. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for you. It's not always about the money. It's about how people grow and develop. And I always say when clients come in at the beginning, it's my job to believe in you to, in, in, until you catch up. So I look back at all the friendships that have been created, all the businesses that have been sold, all the experiences, all the families that have been changed. And the, just last week, uh, a, a trade client of mine, so I've got a painting company, uh, sent me an email and they sent me their original quote that they used to send to their clients and the one they said now. And uh, they sent me an email and they said, I have never felt so proud and so professional in my 25 years of business. Thank you for helping me achieve that. So that's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of that. And I, I know that I do make a difference. So, and I think that's super important, you know, to know that you're you're helping people, you're helping, and that ultimately helps their families and all those things. So, yeah, my business, I think, yeah. I think it's incredibly valuable to embrace that and to be proud of that. Oh. And a lot of people do say it's my children, and but we can be mums, we can have you know, lots of kids, grandkids, and we can still be proud of our businesses, you know, mm. because we're breaking people's financial blueprints. We're breaking generational chains of trauma. We're, we're empowering people to take control Absolutely. of their life and see their worth and creating those transformations. And you're the catalyst. You're the vehicle for that. You know, mm. and I love I love how you said, Anthea, that, that you kind of, you know, cheer them on and support them until they catch up. I love yeah. that. I love that. And more people should embrace that because we, we just need that one person sometimes, especially in a coach or a mentor like you, that is just kind of going on the sidelines, go, 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 go. And then we kind of go, got I've this. got it. I've got it from here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we do. It's really important. I always say that business is the... It's the biggest personal development journey you're going to go on on your life. Everything, every weakness that you have is going to be shone back at you and highlighted every strength that you have. And you're going to have ups and downs. And it's I, I, I'm always incredibly uh, proud of people who are courageous enough to start their own business, you know, because it's a big journey. Um, and it's a fabulous journey, but it's also extraordinarily challenging, you know. So some of my clients even call me mother <laughs> affectionately <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of what we've done. I haven't always thought that. I've sometimes been my worst critic, you know, how we I, I'm not doing very well. But as I look back now, and the longer I'm in the business, as I look back now at all the people, all the changes, I go, oh, yeah, I've done okay. I've done okay. Now, yeah. you've been in this for um, 25 years plus. If you were to go Ooh. back and really talk to that 20-year-old version, that the 20-year-old Anthea, the version of yourself, Ooh. what advice would you give her? I think you have to remember that the first, this is something I say to my clients too, there's never a better time to start anything. You're never going to feel ready to start anything. We don't. We doubt ourselves. There's so much uh, research that shows us how, you know, strong her and a critic is. You know, you walk around and most people just don't feel that they're enough to do things. That actually never gets easier. And I actually think in some ways it maybe gets a little bit harder because if I look back at the courage I had 
as a young person, it was wild compared to what I have now, you know, like to move 15,000 miles with $1,500 and just a hope. It's crazy stuff. So you think, don't wait. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And I think life passes really quickly. And I sound really old when I say that now, you know, but if you're listening and you're in your 20s and you're like smiling and going, yeah, 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 it does. You you get to a certain stage where you go, wow, this is going super quick. And so you just don't get cold. Mm. I always say to people, you're only going to get like, what's the worst that could happen? You're just going to get a flesh wound and it'll heal. But, you know, if you don't try, then you don't go anywhere, you know, and life is meant to be an adventure. It's not all meant to be good. I don't believe it's meant to be all good. It's not through all the good things that happen that we are uh, the memories. It's through the challenges that we overcome, the stories, that was, which is why this book exists, the stories of pain and challenge that people overcome. It's inevitable. You've got to learn to be good. I always say to my clients, you're either having a breakdown or a breakthrough. And that's going to be the cycle. So whichever you've got, celebrate. But you better get really good at managing your breakdowns. And I think that's really important. If you can hold yourself in the darkest of places, when the worst things have happened, and you can breathe, and you can love yourself, you know, the best relationship, I think, and it took me oh, 45 years to learn this, the only relationship that really matters is the one we have with ourselves. It's mm. the only one that matters absolutely <laughs> boom that's who we sit with that's who we go to bed with hold on a minute that's who we leave the world with that conversation and you you know and I think it's so easy for us to get caught up in what other people think of us you know and to care too much or to some people may be listening to this and they're people who always put everyone else first I mean I'm sure you've met lots of women particularly women put everyone first tired exhausted putting everyone first don't put you first Mm. put you first because mm. then you can only from a full cup that we can yeah. and the relationship with ourselves is the one that's going to make or break us so absolutely yeah. oh absolutely and the there. thoughts that go uh, there's something like 60 or that or ninety thousand thoughts that we think in our head every day and um, 80% of them are the same thoughts every day. I was only listening to a podcast about this the other day. And when you were speaking, it was reminding me yeah. of that. Just 70,000 of them are negative is the other bit of that stat, which means every day we're continually criticizing ourselves consciously or unconsciously, you know. And when, when you've got challenges, Sometimes you care to learn our lessons. Absolutely. Mm. And you've yeah. pretty well covered um, what I'm going to ask you next, Anthea, because there's a lot of women, especially, like you said, it's, it's mainly women that are people pleasing and putting everyone else before themselves. And if there is a woman out there listening to this and they really want to pursue their dreams, but they really feel like they're not ready, what inspiration can you share with them? I would say, you know, we all have the drive to learn in us. If we, if you feel like you're not ready, go and learn. Go and invest in learning. If you're listening to this, you're already investing in yourself. Go and read books. Go and talk to people. Go and get the coach. Go and get the mentor. Go and find the people, right, who can help you. Trial and error is a very painful way to learn things. You know how we always go, oh, it's okay. I learned a lesson really okay I'm sure if we could turn back time we'd rather not learn the lesson right because it's painful but I think that don't procrastinate because people regret it you know I know I, I meet business owners who they finally hire a coach and they've been in business for 10 years and then they say and it's the saddest thing to hear them say I wish I'd done this 10 years ago you don't want this to be something you wished you did 10 years ago what's that saying the saying, isn't it? When uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the next best time to plant a tree is now. Like, have a moment of insane um, courage and just jump in. When I, for me, I had one client when I started my business, one client, and I was terrified. And I don't think anyone else is different. I think we all start terrified. 
and 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 you just got to work through that or stay prisoner to where you are which would you prefer mm. There's always an alternative. And uh, I think Les Brown put it the best. The graveyard is the most expensive real estate on earth because that's where our dreams go to die. Yeah. And whenever yeah. I'm faced with a challenge or a decision and I'm thinking, should I, shouldn't I? I always think of that quote and I'm like, just do it. What's the worst that can happen? We've already survived 100% of our worth days, haven't that's we? Right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's we've survived every challenge that we've had. And I always say to my clients, put the shoes on, walk 100 yards. If they're not the right shoes, your feet will tell you and you can change them. But you're not going to learn if they're the right shoes unless you put them on and walk. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah. What kind of message would you like to leave our audience on today, Anthea? I think, I mean, one of the things, one of the things I didn't share in my chapter is that I actually have an incurable disease. At 46, I was diagnosed as having a compromised immune system, which basically means I have plasma every week to stay alive. So there's nothing like a serious illness to make you realise that time that we are very fragile. We are time is very precious. So I really want people to live their best life every day in the ordinary. I have this saying, life is too short and precious to have mediocre anything, whether that's a relationship, a job, a conversation, a situation, your health. If it's mediocre, do something. I don't believe any of us were born for mediocre. And so I think it's important that whatever it is that you want to change, just begin the journey. And I always say to my clients, you know what? There's that fi famous Chinese proverb, the first pancake is always a little lumpy. <laughs> Go and make lumpy pancakes. We <laughs> love we love our lumpy pancakes. That's lumpy for sure. pancakes, yeah. <laughs> So you get the good good. ones. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us in this unstoppable episode. We hope that you found our conversation as captivating as what I did with Anthea. And she is one of the unstoppable series for powerhouse editions, as you can hear from this episode. And if you're ready to embark on your own journey of resilience and leave a lasting legacy, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast for more empowering content that you heard right here today. And while you're at it, please leave a comment for Anthea to reply to on your biggest takeaway from today's episode. And to dive even deeper into the world of the Unstoppable Book series, be sure to grab your very own copy in the show notes below and read Anthea's chapter and immerse yourself in the stories that will ignite your determination and push you beyond your limits just like you heard today. Connect with our unstoppable guest Anthea on social media. Her links are in the show notes below and stay updated on all of her latest insights and projects and remember it is never too late to start creating your own unstoppable legacy thank you very much for joining us and we can't wait to have you back on the next unstoppable episode we will see you in the pod thanks anthea bye-bye the podcast empire podcast mastery for women in business 